This restaurant is dedicated to my father. I feel like I'm in Jamaica. You feel at home when, yeah, when I'm, yeah. I'm here. Um, it's in our nature to strive to do something that makes a difference. Hi guys, uh, welcome, welcome back to the channel. It's your favorite guy, Mr. Zim here. And guys, today I'm in a very exciting place. I'm at a place in Avondale, a Jamaican restaurant. Guys, imagine that, a Jamaican restaurant in Harare. And I'm gonna be talking to the entrepreneur, the owner of this place. And uh, we're gonna see what brought him all the way from Jamaica right into Harare, guys. So guys, stay put and enjoy the video, cheers. Mr. Zim. <laughs> <laughs> I know you, yes. but my guests don't know you. Okay. Would you like to introduce yourself a little bit? My name is uh, Rob Moore. Um, born and raised in Jamaica. Migrated to New York. And uh, I met my wife that is actually Zimbabwean in Russia. We started a relationship and 12 years ago I started my wow. trek to Africa. And, uh, and discovered Zimbabwe and the wow. beauty of Zimbabwe. <laughs> so since those 12 years, I've been returning mm -hmm. at least uh, maybe three, four, five months out of the year, I'm here. To Zimbabwe? To Zimbabwe. Wow. So uh, with we, me personally, uh, this is my first um, attempt at a, a high quality restaurant mm -hmm. because I wanted to do something for the community, right. something that displayed my culture. Mm -hmm who I am and uh, because there's a lot of synergy between Jamaica and Zim. Really? Yeah. Wow. Y you have, uh, it goes beyond just dance hall, you know. You know yeah, we, yeah the, we love dance hall. Dan we have our version of Zimbabwean dance hall. Right, Zim dance hall. <laughs> yeah. And when I came and I saw that, I said, wait a second, this is, this is Jamaica all over again. Yes. So, you know, but there's much more to it is the people. Mm -hmm and the culture. Mm -hmm. You know, Jamaica has a very strong culture. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have out of many people, one pe one person, one, one people. Right. And uh, we embrace other cultures as well and make it part of our own. You know, we thought about investing. We could have invested anywhere, mm -hmm. but we wanted to invest here. Right. Because there's a lot of potential in Zim. Mm -hmm. A lot of young people that are doing a lot of good things. Right. So um, we wanted to invest heavily here, and that's why we created Sorrow. Take us through what the name Sorrow means. What does it mean? Because I was looking yeah. at it and I was thinking, it sounds good, yeah. but what's the meaning? Okay, so that's a good question. So Sorrow is a plant. Um, it's of the hibiscus family. Mm -hmm. And we as Jamaicans, or the Caribbean as a whole, we take it, we dry it, and we boil it. Mm -hmm. It extracts a very nice, flavorful juice from it. All right. And we season that juice with uh, rum, mm -hmm. another seasoning that becomes a sought-after drink in, 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 in the Jamaica. Caribbean. Yeah, in Jamaica especially. Yeah. So if you know someone that makes good sorrel around the holiday times, mm -hmm. everybody's heading to get sorrel from that person. Ah, so I it's see. really nice. So I thought it would be nice to um, make the name here, sorrel. Mm -hmm. uh, you are situated in, a, in, a, in quite a high-end area yeah. over there. Yeah. Uh, did you struggle to find where to, you know, to find the location? Yeah, interestingly we did mm -hmm. because we came and we searched originally to get a stand so that we could build the mm -hmm. restaurant, what we envisioned would the restaurant would become, right. my wife and I. And then about two days before I was going to head back to New York, mm -hmm. I just did a search for a property in Avondale. Mm -hmm. And this particular property popped up. Oh, I see. So we came, we saw the property, we saw what it could become. Mm -hmm. And within 48 hours, we obtained the property. Well, has it been difficult, I mean, finding the ingredients uh, to make Jamaican dishes in Zimbabwe? But how has it been to source those uh, Jamaican contents to really make the authentic right. Jamaican meal, you know, in your restaurant? No, that's a good question. You know, when we thought about it, um, whatever you put into a project is what you get out on the tail end. Mm -hmm. So to get real authentic Jamaican food, we had to source it from Jamaica. Right. We, all of our herbs, all of our spices, our rums, our liquor, our beers, mm -hmm. we brought from Jamaica with us. Wow. 
And to top it off, we also brought our chef from Jamaica. So I was tasting real authentic, yeah, real uh, authentic Jamaican authentic. cuisine. Eh? Absolutely. So, <laughs> so the concept behind all of this was to uh, taste here and see Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So while you're uh, dining, of course, you're hearing the music that is is native to Jamaica. You mm -hmm. you're tasting the the authentic Jamaican food, mm -hmm. and then we created a virtual wall too, so that no yes. matter where you are in the restaurant, you can also see Jamaica. We can place you anywhere right. in Jamaica. Yeah. So for those who have never experienced Jamaica, we'll bring them to the closest experience they can in Zim mm -hmm. of Jamaica. And that was the concept behind everything. I wanted to do something that had international appeal. Mm -hmm. No matter where you were coming from, mm -hmm. you would feel comfortable here. Right. You know, so while it does it is an authentic Jamaican restaurant. You can come from New York, you can come from Canada, UK, or even South Africa, or any of the neighboring countries, and we can be on par. Right. You know, Zim can be on par with other countries as well. Right. And, and I didn't want to do just something normal or, or regular. I wanted to do something that has international appeal. Mm -hmm. um, the top floor of our place is used for our, our clients that fly in. All right. So we have a conference facility, we have our bar, we have our rooming upstairs, mm -hmm. um, our facilities and everything is to cater to those who would like to come here and work. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're doing team building or they're doing a project or they're purchasing real estate. Mm -hmm. They can do everything from, from our here. premises yeah. and we have food and beverage on the premises as well too. Wow. So you can work and play in the, in the in same, the same place. location. Okay. So we have four bedrooms. Mm -hmm. And they have ter been turned into somewhat like a hotel suites. Right. Um, and then we have the conference room, of, of course. Mm -hmm. We have a bar up there. You have a private server mm -hmm. that takes care of the uh, visitors or the guests upstairs. Right. We have wireless throughout the facility. Even, in fact, in our courtyards, we built power and wireless so that if you come in with your laptop, you happen mm -hmm. to get a cocktail or a, or a lunch, you can sit out there, open your laptop and, and, and work. And start working. And we'll start working, yeah. Nice, nice. And we wanted to make it friendly to the the local community, but also to the business community. Mm -hmm. Where we are now, is it a conference room or it's a private lounge? So this is a this is the Dolphin Lounge. Dolphin Lounge, yes. Yeah, uh, this I is the Dolphin the Lounge. The yeah. <laughs> we wanted something uh, fun. Mm -hmm but relaxing, uh, something right. where persons would come together and feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, we we uh, shaded the glassware mm -hmm. so that uh, you can see out what's going on in the dining room, but the dining room cannot they see cannot what's going see on in wow. here. So you okay. can conduct your business privately mm -hmm. while not feeling yes. cooped up. Yes. Yeah? Yes. What else um, created the build up to the entire concept of, of this restaurant? Mm. I was thinking about the customer, mm -hmm. what their experience should be. Okay. And so you made everything from the perspective of your customer, your right, end user. Exactly. Yeah. Because their experience is really what counts. Mm -hmm. You know, I could do we can do everything we wanted to do and the customer could still come and feel uncomfortable. Right. So we really had to do things with the customer in mind. That's um, we, we're in the middle of Avondale, we're right across from the flea market. Yes, I saw that. Yeah, so there's constant traffic. Mm -hmm. And that traffic brings everyone to the flea market. So we wanted to fit in as well to make it somewhere where someone can walk off the street and feel comfortable, mm -hmm. or, or they can make a reservation the same way and still feel comfortable because they're right in the mix right. of everything. Right. So for that, was, that for us was very valuable. Yeah. But I really wanted to do something in Africa because you know Africa has uh, so much potential um, for growth, so much potential to do business with all the, out all the red tape that you find overseas sometimes. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to bring something that was lasting here as well too and we hope to bring more things, Which is maybe a, a more sorrows. Mm -hmm. I see us going to other places, maybe Bardell, maybe Vic Falls, maybe yeah. you know, uh, there's certainly opportunities other places as well. We wanted to see how this pan out. Yeah. And uh, and once we gain some traction, certainly we'd look at going at other places as well. Too. What were some of the challenges that you faced uh, you know, putting everything together? Yeah. Uh, one big uh, challenge was converting this uh, into, you know, it was a, a commercial space before. Mm -hmm. um, but we wanted to create a commercial space that didn't alienate the community. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so when we thought about doing it, we we wanted to make sure that our neighbors would be comfortable with having the restaurant here as well too. Okay. So everything we did on the outside, we took that into into consideration. Into consideration. Right. Uh, that was a challenge because initially, when you say you doing a restaurant people are thinking loud music rowdy partying and you know and all the bad things that might be associated with um, with restaurants or a lounge yeah. so that was a challenge trying to help them to understand that 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 was not the vision mm -hmm. and we overcame that because most of our neighbors here we they come through here the kids come and play through here, play here. and um, oh. we have good relations with our neighbors mm -hmm. um, so I think we worked out well I think what gave you that push to finally say, okay, now is the time, 2023, yeah. to go and make my moves in Africa? You know, it, it, it was a lot of things, but one thing in particular, you had some videos yeah. that I was watching. Okay. Um, you know, YouTube is very powerful because a lot of the conversations that are not had in mainstream media mm -hmm. are had on YouTube, and I was watching the the conversations you were having with Ghana Baby and, yeah. and the conversations with uh, farmers returning from the UK mm -hmm. and persons investing in what they believe in in Africa. Right. And here I was visiting Africa often, staying here for many months and saying, this is something I'd like to do. I'd like to uh, you know, mm -hmm. do something in Africa. So that inspired me. So I, I sat yeah. back and I, I spoke to my wife and I said, well, we've always wanted to do a restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, and so, why not invest here? Right. Do something here, right. you know? Mm -hmm. um, this restaurant is dedicated to my father. Okay. My father um, fell asleep in death uh, three years ago. Right. Uh, married to his wife, my mom, 67 years. Wow. And um, my mom's 95, I still talk with her every day. She's 95? Yeah. Amazing. And, yeah. And, um, you know, we wanted to do something here. We wanted to make it count. And so that's why uh, I looked at your videos, I looked at other people, um, contemporaries of myself that were doing things here in Zim, solar business, food business, uh, uh, educational businesses, so many things that are going on that we said, well, this is the place to be. We're gonna try. Wow. If I go to Jamaica today, mm -hmm. how likely am I to encounter something of the sort, which is this high end? Jamaica is a tourist place, mm -hmm. a lot of tourists. Yeah. And um, if you went to Jamaica, you would, you would see just as many things you see on the screen. Crystal yeah. clear, blue water. Blue, you yeah. see. One of the things, I guess, why Bob Marley was an uh, uh, intricate part of your independence was yes. because many of the situations and struggles that we face are the same. So it's real, you know, um, wherever you are, um, you're going to find the same people. I, I had my GM that manages the place for me mm -hmm. fly in from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And he said after a week, if he closed his eyes, he felt like he was in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And the, the GM that's running this entire place mm -hmm. is not only my family, but my very good friend. Right. Right, Fitz McFarlane. Fitz, you know, Fitz was also running some other properties for me in Jamaica mm -hmm. and he's the best that they come. I begged him to come from Jamaica. To move all the way from Jamaica. A, to be a part to, of this. To, to Zimbabwe. Be, yes, wow. yes. <laughs> so, and, um, yeah. He was already on a movement for Africa. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> Most definitely. So, so you yeah, can tell the rest. Yeah. Uh, Zimbabwe is just like Jamaica. Is it? The only difference is that uh, you don't have a beach. Yes. <laughs> uh, we drive on the same hand. Mm -hmm. I see the same people, the mm -hmm. same thing. I mean, it's the same. Mm -hmm. I ask a lot of questions like, you guys do this? And they said, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, it's, it's no different from Jamaica. It's uh -huh. the same people, only a uh, different language. Uh, mm -hmm. The culture is a little different. Mm -hmm. But trust me, it's okay. It's nice. It's, it? it's great. It's great. And have you learned a few local words? The bad ones, I won't say. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say the Which bad you ones. Say on camera. No, 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 I won't say. I won't say. Yeah. But I'm, but I'm, but I'm getting there. Mm -hmm. I'm getting there, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm happy to be here. Right. Uh, this restaurant, mm -hmm. trust me, it's gonna make me meet, see, greet mm -hmm. a lot of people. A lot of people, yeah. You see this man that you're looking at here. Yeah. He's serious mm -hmm. when it comes to standard. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're about. Mm -hmm. Standard. Mm -hmm. He will keep his own training. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. sometimes they take over from you. Because okay. uh, we are in standard. Mm -hmm. We're not changing anything. Not to ship, games, to yeah. ship a container with herbs and yeah. spice. Yeah, from Jamaica. Beer, yes, rum, beer, yeah. from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. well, we're not joking, this is no knockoff. This is, mm -hmm. it's hard for someone to duplicate this. Yes, I won't only say Mr. Robert Moore, mm -hmm. but his wife, Miss Mary Moore. Yeah. She's, she's angel. Yeah. This man will sleep and wake up with the ideas. Uh -huh. But Miss Mary will say, Fitz, how much money did I give you? What did you do with the money? And that's what I like. <laughs> Keep me on my toes. Yeah. She's the engine. She's the engine of driving. So I'm not going to only say, Rob, yeah. Miss Mary Moore. Miss She's Moore. a champion. Absolutely. She is. <laughs> yeah, man. Absolutely. Yes, I. Amazing. Yeah, man. One love every time, man. Respect, One I. One love. Yeah, man. Peace <laughs> and blessing. All right? I believe you also hosted the West Indies team when they came Yes, to yes. All the cricketers. So <laughs> the West Indies team, um, we've been caring for their food, lunch and dinner for the last three weeks. Yeah. And how, um, how, they, how has they, that been? They love the food. They love the food. They and love the food. And what, what time do you close at night here? Yeah? So we close usually at 9.30. 9.30, okay. Our, our, our kitchen will start to slow down at that point in time. Mm -hmm. And then we'll kind of coast into maybe 10 o'clock. I see. But uh, 9.30 is usually... 9.30, when that's, when, that's when you close. Yeah. Lastly, what would you say yeah. to a young African or Jamaican who wants to, you know, to be who you are, to become like you? I would say, you know, we each have... Um, skills within ourselves that are marketable mm -hmm. you know we all have things that we possess that are worth something to someone else there are many young people that have been around I always tell them to look for things that they do well and grow on them and of course start a business start a business mm -hmm. start a business right yeah it's, it's okay to work for someone but you get real joy and real drive when you're doing it for yourself mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you realize that um, even if you go over the hurdles and you have hardship, you're doing it for yourself and you're learning those things that are valuable to you. So before I had successful business, I had to fail a few times. Yeah. I had to get set back mm -hmm. and then I had to study how I came at it. I had to change, yeah, and, and, and adapt and learn. And if we do that, then we create better versions of ourselves and better business people and better businesses. Right. Yeah. YouTube was something small at one point in time. Yes. yes. Google was something small, an idea at one point in time. Yeah. Microsoft. Mm -hmm. It all starts with a thought. Mm -hmm. And embracing that thought and working towards it. Robert, uh, thank you so much. Yeah. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Brett. Uh, having an interview with you and yeah, being man. at your place. Thank you. And I wish you all the success. Yeah, man. Yeah, but once again, thank you for having me. Love and manners and respect, Brandon. Cheers, sir. All right. <laughs>